και κύριοι. Χαίρομαι ιδιαίτερα που βρίσκομαι σήμερα εδώ. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased that I was able to come here today to be able to discuss in the Committee of the Regions this very important issue. It's an issue which shows us that uh, our objective is European integration. Up until now, uh, all of the political parties were registered in Belgium. And uh, this, this is something which is not entirely um, appropriate uh, for the uh, European Union because th there is a separate legal status and this means that the political parties should have a, a special status which would be granted to them by the European Union. In 2011, the European Commission, on the basis of a proposal from the European Parliament, uh, I was the rapporteur for that originally, in fact, and the Commission uh, decided that it would uh, present uh, a, a suggestion uh, with regards to the European political parties in 2012. And uh, uh, the uh, Vice President, uh, Mr. Jakobis, presented this proposal and uh, for a statute for European political parties. And the objective of that is to ensure that the parties uh, have a legal status right across Europe. And I think it's important for us to clarify that uh, uh, neither the Commission uh, nor we are calling for additional funding for the parties because uh, there could be uh, possible misunderstandings. The European Parliament is not saying that uh, the political parties should achieve, uh, obtain additional funding. Up until now, the European political parties uh, uh, were funded uh, by the European Parliament from uh, the uh, budgets of uh, the groups within the Parliament, and uh, they receive financial representative in the European Parliament. And so for that reason, it's very important that we establish clear rules and clear conditions which uh, uh, set out when a, a, a party can uh, be recognized as being a European political party. One uh, condition is that the party must, be, uh, must have uh, representatives in seven countries, either at national or European level, or uh, Germany or in Spain, but this is not planned for Greece. Uh, so this means that a regional party could also uh, be covered by these provisions. And those are the provisions uh, with regard to the establishment of uh, the parties in order to be able to receive funding. A European uh, po political party would have to have at least one MEP. And the second condition would be you, there cannot be a group within the parliament and uh, two uh, European uh, parties that are not represented within the European Parliament. There can only be one party that would be receiving financial support, and uh, so that would be one which would correspond to a group within the Parliament. And a foundation, uh, well, the same uh, provisions would apply to a, a foundation which would be uh, linked to a party, but only to one, not to several foundations. So the provisions say that uh, it, it, there would be one political party and one political foundation. And in addition to that, I would just like to say uh, that with uh, the uh, special uh, legal status uh, that the parties had, well, with the new provisions, we're creating a possibility for European political parties uh, to uh, come under European uh, le the legal system. They would have a, a special legal status, and this would mean that this status would apply in all member states. And so that means that the political parties uh, could be established in any uh, member state. 
in Madrid, in Berlin, in London, or Brussels, anywhere they would like to be established. And these political parties would have the same legal status in all countries. Now, some people are worried about this and are saying that you could then have two uh, headquarters. But uh, I would just like to say that what isn't covered by these provisions would be covered by national provisions. But everything that is dealt with, why the provisions would apply to all member states. And uh, the amendment that uh, I submitted is, doesn't deviate that much uh, from the proposal is, uh, I think, uh, that the conditions for recognition are entirely clear. A political uh, party has to be represented in uh, one quarter of the member states. That would be seven countries. It also has to have uh, national uh, parliamentarians or also uh, Euro European, or they could be uh, regional if uh, those regions have uh, administrative powers. So, as I've said, one quarter of the member states and at least 3% of the votes in those member states uh, at the last uh, European elections. And a European political party has to um, adhere to the European values and respect all of the uh, principles uh, that form the basis for the European Union. And uh, so this is a very complex issue, and this is why there are very specific provisions uh, setting out the conditions uh, for recognition of a European political party. And it also uh, clarifies when a party would not uh, be in line with these provisions. And uh, as I've said, uh, that there has to be at least one parliamentarian. Now, on the party lists, there has to be a, a, the appropriate gender balance in party lists. And that is in line with the treaties of the European Union. A, uh, European, the European Parliament will uh, uh, register the European political parties on the basis of a, uh, a registration pr procedure, which will be an administrative procedure. So if a political party meets all of the conditions, and apply to the appropriate uh, person or body within uh, the European Parliament, then uh, the, the registration would be carried out. Now, objections can be raised if it is felt that one of these political parties does not meet the conditions, and then uh, checks will be carried out, and it will be established whether or not uh, the political party does correspond to all of the requirements. Now, there is, of course, the question as to who would uh, carry out these checks, who would be responsible for determining whether or not a, a political party uh, a, it fulfills these conditions. Now, here it, we could have misunderstandings as well. It could be that certain parties want to exclude other parties, either from registration or from funding possibilities. And I think uh, that we need to keep the procedure that we have in uh, the rules of procedure at the moment. Uh, the uh, Commission has proposed that the Parliament will carry out these uh, checks and that this will be done together with the uh, authorities from the country of origin of that party. And secondly, the party can be called upon to submit a declaration. And what I would suggest is that this procedure uh, be, be dealt with by uh, the appropriate uh, uh, committee within the parliament. A uh, hearing can be organized, which would mean that everyone would have an opportunity to uh, express their views 
and there would then be a specific uh, position drafted, and uh, this would then be uh, submitted to the plenary once it had uh, gone to the Conference of Presidents. And if there should be a problem uh, with this application, or and uh, three representatives uh, 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 would uh, present an independent permission that would be representatives of the three institutions, one from the Parliament, one from the Commission, and one from the Council. And if uh, there were to be contradiction between the institutions, then uh, it would mean that things would be blocked and uh, it would then be forwarded to the European Court of Justice. Now, many have uh, suggested that uh, 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 submission to the court would be the uh, general uh, procedure, but that would mean that many people would go uh, directly to the uh, Court of Justice. And uh, th that is something which is not provided for at the moment. Uh, at the moment, it has to go, first of all, through the uh, national procedures before there can be an application made to the European Court of Justice. Now, moving on to financing, the European political parties have 80% of uh, the uh, support uh, provided by the, uh, the Parliament on the basis of uh, their re results in the elections and all of the uh, political parties are uh, dealt with uh, in the same way. And I'm suggesting 90% and then 10% uh, would, would be uh, reserved uh, for other parties on an equal basis. Now, can the parties be active at national level? That is a question. They may be active at national level. And uh, they can carry out campaigns for members, uh, but only when they are dealing with uh, issues which are related to the European Union. Now, of course, everyone could say that everything relates uh, to the European Union. But, in fact, that is not the case. It's, it's a question of uh, the powers, and it would have to be something that would relate to those powers and uh, the European political parties and their associated foundations. Can carry out activities which are uh, linked to uh, the European Union uh, within the Parliament, and there are 370 amendments were submitted, and most of these amendments were on these uh, sensitive issues that I've just been talking about. How can we ensure that a party? Uh, uh, has a democratic, uh, the democratic values and uh, how can appeals be made. We want to ensure that there are no political parties that are at a disadvantage and it also should not mean that some European political parties try to squeeze out other uh, political parties. And we have had discussions with the shadow reporters, and I think uh, with a number of amendments, it is going to be possible for us to uh, deal with this in the committee uh, prior to the vote on the 19th of February. I do think we will be able to find agreement on this, and uh, I think that it will be possible to conclude on this by uh, July, because all of the European political parties that I've been talking to want this uh, legal status uh, to exist, and they want to ensure that uh, it is introduced prior to the elections in 2014. And this will mean that the parties will then be able to publicly declare priorities for the elections and will be able to say uh, what their preferences are for the uh, positions within uh, the Commission. But, of course, uh, citizens will have to know this prior to the elections. And so for that reason, it would be good 
uh, for citizens to know who the candidates will be. And so it would be very good if we could uh, introduce this prior to the elections. So those were all of the comments I wanted to make on my report. I think that it's a very interesting issue, and I think that it is something which is also of interest for the Committee of Regions, particularly for the um, uh, regions uh, with the powers that I was mentioning earlier. And, of course, the Budget Committee will be presenting a report with regard to the financing provisions for European political parties. As I say, that's the responsibility of the Budget Committee. And perhaps I could just also say that the Legal Affairs Committee uh, submitted an opinion to our committee. And uh, the, the, their position uh, contained the same points that uh, were in my report. There were a lot of uh, amendments that were, in fact, withdrawn at the last minute because we were able to uh, reach a consensus uh, within the Legal Affairs Committee. Now, I don't want to speak any further at the moment, but I would be happy to uh, take any questions. Uh, that